Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Today we are here to shoot something very controversial. Uh, so episode 5F, it is the Synagogue of Satan. And how convenient that Russell and I both just decided to wear black today. <laughs> so guys, I uh, wanted to apologize for the recordings. We've only been able to get one mic to do this, but another mic is coming soon. So getting straight into it, Russell, you prepared something gripping for us today. Yes, today we'll discuss the who is behind the Synagogue of Satan, its history and... Um, who actually are those entities behind who represent the synagogue of Satan? Okay, and I must just comment. I saw something very funny on social media. Someone said, you know, let's address the atheists. So they said, you've never believed in the force of God because you could never see it. But now you've been killed by a disease that you also cannot see. So a lot of people don't understand how Satan's kingdom works. And I just wanted to, Russ, and if you can just tell people quickly, just to give them a, a, like a quick description of how Satan actually operates, how he uses, manipulates, because people, unless you have spiritual wisdom or spiritual eyes, you cannot actually see these things. But, sorry, if you've got your spiritual eyes, you can notice things. It's not like you see it physically, but you, you have the wisdom to know, hold on, this is an attack, this is evil, this is demonic, won't you please just tell our audience a little bit about spiritual warfare? The enemy, Satan, translated means the accuser. He continuously accuses before God believers and even non-believers. Like, if you want to know more about it, read the book of Job or Job, depending how you pronounce it. And you see how blatantly Satan went to accuse before God a righteous man that lived. A godly life. Secondly, he never wants to announce himself that it's him who does these evil things. When Job saw all the calamities that came upon his life, he thought they were coincidental, that God was allowing it. He never saw the hand of Satan. So, the second thing that I'll say be, besides the fact that Satan is number one accuser, number two, he wants you not to see him when he acts. He wants you not to discern that it's him behind many things. He wants to be quiet in the background. Sometimes you hear a voice in your head, you're not a real Christian, look what you did. Uh, and you think this is your own thought. Little you know that demons can also give thoughts. So Satan works through demons to implant thoughts. And he, thirdly, he is a master deceiver. He deceives. He sometimes will attack you where you least expect it. His favorite attack comes from family members, fellow believers, people that you um, uphold in high esteem, and anything, anything in your life that you hold dear than God, he will attack you through those channels. So, yes. Um, God is teaching us through His Word to have a discernment where the Holy Spirit actually can unmask Him, just like Jesus did. When He tried Satan to work through Peter to prevent Jesus from going to the cross, Jesus recognized immediately it wasn't Peter, it was Satan, and says, Get behind me, Satan. How interesting. Yeah. And when I look at the 5G towers camouflaged as a tree, I see that as like Satan because it's such a counterfeit. You, it's supposed to be a tree that is supposed to be healthy and a, a give off oxygen, and yet it's actually a killing machine. And, and how many Christians, or even let's say unbelievers, say, well, what's wrong with the technology? What's wrong with knowledge? Isn't the name of the tree the tree of knowledge, the one that Adam and Eve eat? Yeah. And so, quite interesting, yes. Yeah. I won't take up any of your time, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share your thoughts, and remember to download our videos. I've put description links in the bottom. Also, get involved in our social media discussions. Handing over to Russell, why don't you take it away? Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, firstly, I'd like to say, once again, we are blessed to be together. We are blessed to be on that journey, but let's bless the name above all names, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, honor, and praise. One of the first things that I'll say before I start this presentation, it is 
not an attack on Jewish people or on Israel. The name may suggest so, there is got nothing to do with synagogues that Jews go to synagogues on Saturday or the Sabbath. Bless them for that if they want to do that. This actually session has nothing to do with that. Um, so, um, who represents the synagogue of Satan? We start straight in scriptures, Revelation 2 verse 9, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say that are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And Revelation 3, 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. The first thing we notice that obviously is not speaking about Jews, so to speak, because Jesus says they are not what they see. What I'd like to draw your attention, firstly, is that in the entire Bible, that statement, the synagogue of Satan, only occurs twice, and it's in the last book of the Bible. And it's in the address of Jesus to the seven churches. And how remarkable, from the chart that you see on the screen, the seven churches that we already did together, that topic, the two churches that Jesus had nothing bad to say about them, the church of Smyrna, the suffering church, and the church of Philadelphia, the loving church, these are the two churches where the name of the synagogue of Satan appears. So, straight to the question, who are they? Let's start looking through some scriptures. Acts chapter 15 verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. Galatians 2 verse 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in who came in privately, to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Okay, didn't read the whole verse, uh, the next verse. Now, Paul is describing the occasion in Acts, in Galatians, paragraph. The false brothers from Judea are those that start teaching, even that they've converted to Christianity, they start teaching that unless you follow the Moses laws and you get circumcised, you cannot be saved. How interesting, the Apostle Paul, the one who used to be a Pharisee, part of the order of the Pharisees, the, strict, the strictest of the religious sects of Israel, who used to obey all the laws, He's saying plainly, these are false brethren who want to bring you into bondage. Brothers and sisters, how many, how many churches and church um, cults or sects are actually teaching that besides following Jesus, you must also follow the laws of Moses? Be careful, dangerous ground. Dangerous reefs are behind. You are a, possibly entertaining, in that case, a religious spirit. I'm not saying Christians should be lawless and Christians should have a license to sin against the laws of God. What I'm trying to say here is that the laws of Moses, no one could keep them. That's why Jesus was the only one. And the scripture says, by the works of the law, no man, shall, no man shall be saved. Now, Jesus saves us by grace. We stand on the grace path. We know the laws of Moses, which reveal when we're in active sin. But definitely, we're not staying away from sinning because of the law. Because the law will lead you to bondage. 
The reason we're not sinning and we're not breaking God's laws is because we love Jesus. That's the main distinction. If you follow the one, you will become religious. If you follow the other, you will draw closer to God. John 8 verse 44 reads, You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Further on, I'm reading Matthew 16 verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Okay, now, firstly, we did see in the book of Acts, the religious spirit coming through false brethren. Okay, and so that synagogue of Satan set up who is behind, I'm giving you the different categories of people who follow in that bracket. So it can come in your own church under false brethren. But it can come from a religious order, just like it was the Sadducees and the Pharisees who were the one actually condemning Jesus. They were the religious um, group at the time under the priesthood. And Jesus identified them. He says, you serve your father, the devil. So Jesus faced the same opposition from the order of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, just like Paul was facing the same in the book of Acts that we read. Um, from the scriptures, it's plain to understand that the opposition of Jesus' ministry came from the religious order of the Pharisees and the political order of the Sadducees. These were the two main um, branches of the authority under the priesthood in Israel at the time. Um, since they were religious and political orders uh, with allegiance to Satan, just like Jesus says, you serve your father, it follows that they have occultic links. So for the reason for that is that Satan to give you power to do counterfeit lies, you need to belong to his order in order to receive those powers. Um, while they were identified as Sadducees and Pharisees, their existence of those, actually, the spirit behind them was in existence long before then. Until today it operates. They operate, operate under different secret and non-secret orders, organizations, societies, parties, etc. Um, I'll read a few scriptures for clarity. Deuteronomy 4.48 from Aurora, Aurora, I'll rather read it like this, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion with S, which is Herman. And Isaiah 33 verse 20 reads, Look upon Zion with Zet, the city of our somnities, thine eyes shall see Jerusalem a quiet habitation. And Genesis 6 verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, pay attention, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty, mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The last scripture refers to the events before the flood, when fallen angels start sleeping with women, and their offspring were the known giants Nephilims. Why did I read about Mount Hermon and Sion? Um, it's because Sion with S is believed in where Mount Hermon is, the border between Lebanon and Israel, is where actually it's believed that the fallen angels start mating with women. And the fallen angels that were the so-called watchers. The book of Enoch has a lot to say about them. And uh, um, 
the judgment of God came with the flood for judging mankind for actually uniting with fallen angels to do the bid of Satan. Um, so the name of this order, the um, order of the Sadducees and the Phar Phar Pharisees, the spirit behind already dates back from that time. Actually pretending to have allegiance to Zion of Jerusalem. Meanwhile, it's Zion. So Zion with S represents actually the kingdom of Satan and the Antichrist that will come and what happened on Mount Hermon or Zion. That deception is spread quite a lot around the world. There is a order of Zion. There is city names with Zion. Don't ever be fooled. Zion with S is not the same as, as Zion. And yet they want you to believe that they're referring to Zion of Jerusalem and David. And uh, let's look at 1 Chronicles 1.10. And Cush begat Nimrod and he began to be mighty upon the earth. And in Genesis 11 verse 2 to 4. Says, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Um, okay, and don't need to read further, it refers to the Tower of Babel. What I'd like to say here is that Nimrod was the first emperor that, after the flood, tried to restore that order. Um, the order, the lost order of Atlantis. Plato, the famous philosopher, wrote about the city of Atlantis. So that is the reference of the place where the fallen angels were mating with humans and the Nephilim, the giants, were born. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. Okay. And in 2 Timothy verse 3 to 8, it says, Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds. Okay, what am I talking about? As we can see, the spirit that started already before the flood, already in the Garden of Eden when, when Adam and Eve sinned, it moved the seed of Satan in before the flood through the giants and the Nephilims, and later on it moved to through Nimrod in the first empire that he created, and from there the first empire recorded in the Bible that in the time of Abraham was the Egyptian empire, we see that the Egyptians, they followed the occult practices of the Sumeritans. And Jambres and Janes were Jews who opposed Moses. They worked actually for Pharaoh. So you see now, these were already false prophets. They were Jews who apostated themselves with falsehood of the Egyptian gods, which used to be the Sumeritans, which used to be um, those who followed Nimrod and before that, before the flood um, of Noah, what took place there. Um, for that, we, then we move to Numbers 26, 9. And the sons of Eliab, Nemuel and Dathan and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram which were famous in the congregation who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah when they strove against the Lord. And Nehemiah 9, 18 says, Yea, when they had made them a molten calf, this is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt and had wrought great provocations. We see now the religious order of the apostate Jews following through from the Egyptian gods that they worshipped calves into the land of Israel. And already in the wilderness they, they withstood Moses and they said, no, these are the gods that delivered you from Egypt. You know what happened to them. Um, okay, so... Um, 
we go further with Judges 18 verse 30. We read, And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests of the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And in Genesis 49, 16, it reads about the tribe of Dan. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that bites the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backwards. Dan were not part, the tribe of Dan was not part of the priesthood. Yet the scripture says they will judge the rest of the people. How will that happen? I've mentioned in the previous section dealing with the Antichrist that it is believed that Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. It will be a descendant from the tribe of Dan. And Dan was in the territory exactly of Mount Hermon, where I read to you about Sion, where exactly is believed the rituals between fallen angels and humans to mate that produced the giants, the Nephilims, took place place. So you can see the connections, how that spirit travels amongst even the children of Israel with apostate Jews um, and the pagan practices that were adopted. Now, what happened later on after Solomon? Okay, in 1 Kings it's recorded, and the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones. That's reference in Solomon's reign. In other words, Silver was so common, it was like stones. In other words, they were all wealthy. So let me tell you this. The apostate Jews are looking to a Messiah type of Solomon, who one who can give them riches. That's the reason why they rejected Jesus. Because Jesus never delivered them from the Roman Empire. They kept saying in the Gospels, Will you deliver us? They wanted to make Jesus king. Will you deliver us from the Romans? So they're looking for a king like Solomon that will give them the riches. In the reign of Solomon, Israel were the greatest. Silver was as common as stones, meaning that they were rich, they were wealthy. That's what they were looking for. They were the strongest power in the world. However, godly Jews, they don't look for a figure like Solomon. They look for a figure like David. For David, God says, he is a man after my own heart. He was a man of faith. You see the difference? David, even that he became wealthy in the greatest king and his son had even greater wealth. David exemplifies the king with the love for God, the greatest spiritual height in the kingdom of Israel in the Old Testament. Um, Okay, so in uh, 1 Kings 11, 3 to 4, I'll read just the underscored items for it came to pass that Solomon was old and that his wives turned away his, car, his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. There is the distinction those who aim for a for a, a king like David and those who aim for a king like Solomon. Solomon prostituted his faith and he fell from grace. Solomon is a key figure in the order of the priory or priori of Sion. Why I brought the scripture about Sion? Because that order wants you to believe that it's got something to do with Zion, which is in Jerusalem. No. The name is with S, Sion. So the priori of Sion represents a religious organization with apostate views supporting the order of a kingship like Solomon's who became occultists in his latter part. He turned away from God and followed other gods. Rich, powerful and wise, that is the example. Uh, this type of Messiah they want. So remember, Solomon is a key figure to understand the synagogue of Satan and what it stands for. Um, their order believes that their Messiah will be a reincarnation of Solomon, which is in line with the Sumeritans' belief in Nimrod and Tammuz. Remember that Nimrod, 
after his death, before that his mother slept with Nimrod, with her own son, and the child she had was Tammuz, and everyone worshipped on 25th of December, believing that that was the reincarnation of Nimrod. The occultists believed in the reincarnation of Solomon for, for their Messiah to come. Um, one who will make them the greatest, and Jesus didn't bring them, that they therefore they rejected him. In Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 9 to 11, we read, um, And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations they do here. So I went in, and I saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Okay, up to here I'm reading. You see what happened? The elders, the seventy elders that formed part of the Sanhedrin, the religious arm of Israel, actually prostituted themselves in worshipping all the different gods of the neighboring nations. In the time of Ezekiel, that's what was recorded. Um, okay, um, the Babylonian exile, God judged Israel for their sins and exiled them to Babylon. That exile marked the beginning of a major infiltration in Moses' teachings with esoteric practices which were learned in Babylon. Kabbalah is regarded as a very prominent sect of Judaism, but is full of occultic practices and believes in reincarnation. I'm puzzled that many Orthodox Jews follow Kabbalist rabbis. Little they know that they believe in occultism, like for example, they believe in reincarnation. Where does reincarnation teachings come from? From the Eastern mysticism, um, India, Buddhists and all the rest. And they learned it in Babylon. And nowhere, I challenge a few times Orthodox Jews, say, fine, you believe that the Kabbalists are godly because they're called rabbis. You tell me now where Moses, in the five books of Moses, ever he wrote about reincarnation. They cannot answer you that because it doesn't exist. They can suck it out of their thumbs and make it up. Maybe of some the teachings of someone else rather than the Bible, but it's not in their books. In the five books of Moses, there is nothing. So Ezekiel 8 verse 14 says, that the scriptures that in the temple courts there were women who sat weeping for Tammuz. They again the entity, the reincarnation of Nimrod. In Ezekiel 8.16, I'm not reading the whole passage, it says, and they worshipped the sun towards the east. You see, the sun god that worship was worshiped, that actually worship came from Babylon. Nimrod is regarded as the sun god as well. Um, and then the Egyptians adopted the same entity, just named him differently. Um, and uh, so you see the traveling from Babylon all the way to Egypt and to Israel again. Uh, now, what happened from Babylon, Egypt and Israel? Where did it transfer go? Well, you follow the, the track of money and the power, where the money flow, and you see that each empire subsequently actually followed the same, um, the same idols. And from the Egyptian Empire, Israel, the Babylonian Empire, then what happened? The Middle Persian Empire and the Greek Empire and then the Roman Empire. It followed through up until the Vatican, Constantine setting up the apostate church of the catholic order and again i have nothing against catholics but i have a lot to say against the catholic church teachings that are rotten with a lot of eastern mysticism there including the worship of sun god okay there is a picture to see on the screen how the pope holds the image of the sun and yet they put the cross on top to say no 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 we believe in jesus or in our god but you can see the sun. <laughs> These are the Sumeritans' teachings. That's the worship of Babylon Nimrod. 
In Acts chapter 7 verse 51 to 54 we read, Stephen, the first martyr for the faith, reads, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. How interesting, Stephen told them directly. All throughout the history of Israel, your forefather persecuted the real prophets of God and they always followed false teachings, pagan teachings. And I end with reading the underlined paragraph at the bottom. When they heard these things, who? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. You see, when you identify who is behind, when you identify the enemy, just like Stephen did, immediately they showed their face. All their self-control went through the window. <laughs> they start gnashing their teeth, putting their, 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 their basically hands on their ears. They didn't want to hear anything and they rushed to actually stone Stephen. That's what happened when actually you discern Satan working through people. These apostate Jews continued their opposition to God and the gospel of Jesus, in, uh, um, just like it happened to Stephen. And uh, in Ezekiel 28, verse 2 to 5, suddenly we're going to shift our focus to the more political arm um, and um, economic arm um, of the order of the priory of Zion. We read, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, and thou art a man, and not God, that, that thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding thou hast gotten the riches and hast gotten calf and silver and thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by the traffic has thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. And one more I'll read before I explain. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches. With silver, iron, tin and lead they traded in thy fairs. Now, Tyre is a reference to what is today Lebanon. At the time, the biggest traders in the world were the Phoenicians in Tyr and Sidon. They were trading all around the world and they had the big, accumulated the biggest wealth. Okay, now they actually, those rich families from that time, they start moving after the establishment of the Roman Empire. In fact, uh, Phoenicia was destroyed as a kingdom somewhere between um, uh, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar brought a destruction to the time of the Roman Empire and they slowly start moving their wealth over to Europe. And Tarshish is a name for Spain. Okay, so um, what does the Priory of Sion stand for? They are a group of about 120 families in the world that hold over 90% of the world's wealth. In majority, but not limited to, they are apostate Jewish families that use their wealth and influence to advance the kingdom of the beast. They have no heart for Judaism, Christianity or any religion, for they know well who they serve and who gives them their evil powers. Yet often they pretend that they are any of those. Their forefathers were the authors of the Protocols of the Learned of the Elders of Sion with S of the 33rd degree. Their esoteric belief system includes rites and rituals of initiation to swear allegiance to Lucifer. 
They cover their secret activities under hosts of organizations, corporations, political and religious orders, and many more. One of their motto is, we see you, but you don't see us. And there is in the dollar bill, <laughs> Novus Order Seclorum, New World Order, very interesting. And you see on the top of the pyramid, the top seeing eye. So if you follow the stones in the pyramids, there is rows of stones. Each one can see the stones below and above, but the one on top see all below, but they cannot see the top actually headstone. Hence, they, that's their motto. We see you from the top and we rule you with wealth and wisdom that we have. We are gods. I was actually given an opportunity when I first started doing my videos. It was about business success because don't forget it, guys. I came from the coaching world. Which is why I know how to discern preachers who have been taught by uh, you know the world and not led by the Holy Spirit. I argue this all the time. But I was offered, hey, all the wealth, riches, resources, uh, we'll help you with your videos, we'll help you edit, we'll give you everything. All you have to do is make a deal with us. And I said, excuse me? I knew straight away what it was and I said, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, that's the deal. Give your heart to Satan, he'll make you rich until he sends you to hell and then he turns his back on you. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Don't ever trade your precious soul for... And just on that, do you know how many celebrities regret it now? Because they got the fame, they got the fortune, but they don't have the fulfillment or the love. Exactly. And this world cannot give you what Christ can. Amen. And they are trying their best to get out and they can't. They can't, yes. Yet, if one bright day they come to their senses, they can turn to God and say, Lord, I sinned against you, please help me. God is merciful. 1 Kings 5.12 reads, And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him, and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two made a league together. Now, I'll read one more scripture and I want to explain something very str of strategic importance. 1 Kings 7, 13 and 14. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyr. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali and his father was a man of Tyr, a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. Okay. While King Hiram was a king of the, the Phoenicians, and I mentioned already that these were wealthy family with a lot of wealth. They were the wealthiest nation at the time, besides Israel, that Solomon just became king. And how interesting, the two wealthiest nations at the time immediately made a pact, a league, the first scripture that I said. Uh, we see the beginning of the order of the Freemasons. If you study the teachings of Freemasons, uh, they worship Solomon and they also believe that Solomon is their Messiah to come. And they show and hear Huram was a king, but Huram was also a worker the, of stones that actually built the temple of God. He was instrumental, let's not say he alone built it. And now that's where Freemasons comes from. They believe that was wisdom given to them from God. Solomon was a type of God and they believe in their false Messiah to come. So the Freemasonry order, the roots dating back to what happened there. Yet it never really existed. Yet these apostate families that believed in wealth later on um, uh, made the order Freemasonry and they actually start quoting scriptures in the Bible to justify the existence which are actually um, false teachings. They turn the Bible upside down to make it something that is not. Um, the Freemasonry order developed as a result of the above events and what is Freemasonry standing for? It's a secret organization that gives direct allegiance to Satan, or what they worship, the Jabalon, which J comes from Je Jehovah, or Jehovah, Baal comes from Baal, the, the false deity in, in the Old Testament, and On is the uh, Egyptian gods 
that actually the sun god and so forth that they worship the Egyptians and their lodge stands for that through initiations that you put through. They make you swear allegiance to Satan. They, the first three levels, they, uh, they say, you know, we just do charities and good works, yet uh, ask them, just watch the, 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 the vows that you make in that organization and you tell me that you can be a Christian and serve that evil organization. No way, brothers. If you write me about it, I can send you so much ton of information about Freemasons that you can actually identify them. In the initiation rites, Freemasons bind themselves and their posterity under a curse in secrecy. Did you hear what I said? Their posterity. It means that if I become a Freemason and I make that vow, all those that are born after me from my bloodline, they are dedicated to Satan. How horrible. How many Freemasons have their families later on there was a family member become a christian and there was so much difficulties that they faced curses um violent deaths poverty that would come um miscarriages and on and on and on and on so fellow christians if you've got a freemason in your family you can break free it's not enough just to become a christian you need to specifically separate yourself from the sins of your forefathers and to break that vow that was made when they, your forefathers became Freemasons. If you need more information, please write to me. I can help you with that. Uh, the Freemasonry buildings are usually minimized copies of the Temple of Solomon in the Holy of Holies, which is the place where no one was allowed to go except once a year usually sits the master of the order who is being worshipped. They usually call him worshipful master. In South Africa, Freemasonry, Freemasonry is widely spread. Many churches have pastors that are Freemasons and elders. This is horrific just to think about it. And the sad part is that some Christians that are in those churches, they know it, they feel that something is odd, and they don't know how to address it because the first thing they'll tell you Freemasons, pastors or elders or those in leadership says, no, we are Christians, nothing wrong. You can become a Freemason only if you're a believer. Hey, but do they tell you what believer? You can be believe in anything. In Allah, in, uh, uh, in, in the, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a Hindu, you can be anything. So long you believe in God, but you can never mention the name of Jesus. They, huh? they don't tell you those things. Okay, um, it's terrible. Uh, you want to know how to confront the leadership of the church? If you've got a Freemason, write to me. I'll send you material and you can actually equip yourself to address it scripturally and say, you have no part of this fellowship here in this congregation. In fact, you're not allowed to come in the church because you're not believe according to your vows that you made. All right, we move forward. Freemasons are waiting for their Messiah to reincarnate. Solomon, which we call Antichrist. So Solomon, it's the type of Antichrist they want. So when Antichrist come, he'll come in and love his and lavish the power and authority that Solomon had. They will recognize him by his proclamation to be God when he sits in the temple in Jerusalem. You see, every meeting of the Freemasons starts where the one who sits in the Holy of Holies in their minimized version of the temple opens the gatherings and they address him as the worshipful master. So their signal that their Messiah will come will be when the Antichrist walks into the Holy of Holies, as per 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, and declare himself to be God. All the Freemasons around the world will know this is our Messiah and they will worship him. Uh, there are three major international Freemasonry lodges, the Windsor Lodge, the Scottish Rite and the Benite Brit, which is little known, but it's the, the Jewish order Benite Brit. Um, they have 
Freemasons are usually influential people in all parts of society, from lawyers, judges, doctors, uh, all spheres of society. If you're a judge and I'm a Freemason and you're a Freemason and, you, and I'm a higher Freemason and I instruct you in this case now that you're handling, you shall acquit this person even that he is guilty. You have to obey the order of the Freemasonry. They have to obey my order rather than doing their job because they made a vow. If they don't, they actually are threatened with death, painful death. It's part of their ritual and vows. It's a terrible, horrible organization. So um, don't be fooled if they tell you, no, we're good people, we do just charities. On the first three levels, that's what they do. But wait until they go on a higher level and you see how horrible uh, actually that organization is. Other member organizations, the Bilderberg Club, which is the political arm, the Knights of Malta, the Occultist arm, the Vatican religious arm, the Skull and Bones of Yale University occultist arm, the Jesuit order religious arm, the Council of Foreign Relations political arm, the Trilateral Commission political arm, the Kabbalah order religious arm, the International Monetary Fund, the economic arm, the World Bank, the economic arm, the World Trade Organizations economic arm, Freemasonry, occultic and religious arm. Um, etc. Many, many other organizations. Um, okay, um, uh, look, there's so much information I can tell you further about this, but I, what I'd like to say is the synagogue of Satan is represented by those evil entities behind. They hide behind thousands upon thousands of organizations. They control the wealth of the world, the politics of the world, the war machinery of the world, uh, the religious aspects of the world, they're everywhere. They're in Christianity, they're in, in Judaism, they're in um, Buddhism, they're in communism. They, their armies everywhere. They've got their representatives under different names they hide. I'll list now for you some great historic events they orchestrated, which you may believe that they just happened by chance. The French Revolution, they invented it. The rise of Napoleon, it was their doing. The October Communist Revolution in Russia, their doing. The, the Balfour Declaration in 1917, World War I. The rise of Hitler, World War II. The Federal Reserve establishment in the USA. Go and check the dates when it was established, 1913 and exactly how it happened. The collapse of the commercial, the, sorry, the communist bloc. Uh, they created that bloc, the October Revolution, and then they destroyed it when the time was right. Gorbachev, Perestroika, do you remember that? The end of the apartheid in South Africa, they did it too. The 9 11 event, they did it. The economic recession in 2008, they did it. The what is taking place right now, they did it. Okay, make no mistakes. If you believe that it's all coincidental, you are gullible, you're gullible, and you're being deceived. How did the order migrate? The migration of the order after 70 AD, when Israel stopped existing as a nation. Those apostate religious Jews, the Pharisees and Sadducees and the many other families and remember I mentioned they use they are Phoenicians families that they moved over to Spain and so forth but their, their transition in general you can see their, their signature everywhere they moved from Israel to Alexandria in Egypt until about 500 AD from there they moved over to Rome and they infiltrated the papacy from there, they moved over to Spain, and guess what happened? The first empire after the Roman Empire, prominent, was the Spanish Empire. The conquests, the invention. And then they moved north to the Great Britain, the royal family. And what happened after that? 
the British Empire. Um, in between, they were the main one in the rise of the French uh, Empire as well. Um, from there, from Great Britain, they moved over to United States and all around the world. So they travel where the money trail is. And all the empires that ruled ever since Jesus in the world, you, you, their signatures all over. They're the driver behind those. Um, their head office is in Switzerland. If you ever wonder, in this time of crisis, we don't know what's going to happen. What do we do with our wealth? What currency should I choose? Did you guess right? Yes. Go for the Swiss franc. <laughs> if you want to choose a currency, don't choose the euro, the dollar, Chinese yuan, Japanese. Go for the Swiss franc. Because their wealth, all the gold they've stolen from the whole world is right there. <laughs> so that currency can never fail. <laughs> Very interesting. What does the Priori of Scion aim? Now, Priori of Scion is the umbrella organization on top of all the societies they hide under an organization. What is their goal? To subdue mankind under the authority of their master, Satan. To enslave economically, spiritually and physically every person in the world. To re-establish the lost Atlantis in Zion, Genesis 6. Yes, you guessed it right. They will bring rituals just like did in Zion in Mount Hermon when fallen angels were mating with humans. They will do it once again once the Antichrist appears. To establish their own millennium kingdom, the Fourth Reich. Remember Hitler promised the Third Reich will be a thousand years. Where did they get the thousand years from? From the Bible. Jesus says, you will reign for a thousand years. So the fourth, the fourth Reich, which is the new world order, will promise the same. And to divide the world into ten regions, the ten horns of the beast, we discussed that. To force the mark of the beast on mankind. To establish the authority of the Antichrist. To force Israel to submit to the Antichrist. To force the nations to submit to their laws, Noahide laws, very interesting, search about Noahide laws. Anyone who does not follow the Noahide laws, in other words, there will be one laws, the laws of Moses for um, when the Jews are allowed to rebuild the temple, which they'll follow. But for the rest of the nations, the Noahide laws, if anyone doesn't follow them, they'll be permitted to execute them. So if you... Become a born-again believer in the time of the tribulation. Those laws will condemn you. To re-establish the mating of fallen angels with women worldwide. I've mentioned that. To change the genes of mankind. This is a staggering one to ponder. When you take the mark of the beast, what little is known is that your genes will be changed into the genes of the Nephilim. Just like the occultists have a practice when you become a Satanist, immediately you go through a ritual of killing an animal or a human and a powerful demon comes in you. Now we go back to where do demons come from? They are disembodied spirits of the Nephilim that drowned in the flood. So they had bodies once upon a time. So they've got existing genes. Now they are spiritual entities. But now those who accept the mark of the beast, I believe there will be a substance given to them that will cause the genes of the person, human being, to start changing into the genes of the Nephilim that comes to dwell in them. And eventually, they will become from a human being into a Nephilim being, into something grotesque and impossible to save anymore. That's why when... The scripture says they can never be redeemed after accepting the mark. It's simply because the, the soul of the person is no longer in existence. It becomes something else. The genes are changed. Just and touching on that, if, if you go look back at Ken Peters, when he spoke about what he saw in the tribulation, you guys need to go watch it because he says that these disfigured yes. things come knocking on doors, searching for people. It's... It's spine chilling to think what the tribulation and the great tribulation is exactly. going to be. Exactly. They will be 
um, spiritual in nature because remember these are demons that now they have bodies with their own genes and they'll have some form of humans but it will be distorted so horrifically and they will know exactly who the Christians is because remember they see in the spirit world and they'll be hunting believers during the tribulation it will be horrific time so brothers and sisters uh, it may be very difficult for some of you to take this material I will close with that I've, I've got so much more to say about it but it's uh, I think the main point is that these the synagogue of Satan raises up the most when we believers please the Lord fully and do his will that's why the two churches that did the will of God and he had nothing to say against them no surprisingly that the synagogue of Satan appears Satan is the most infuriated when all of us brothers and sisters obey the Lord and push back the kingdom of Satan. So with that, I will finish for today. Our next session will be part 6a, the rapture of the church. Please read Revelation chapter 2 and 3 as well as Matthew 24, uh, Luke 21, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. God bless you. Over to Dan for closing. Yeah, guys, just remember, if you want a copy of this booklet, it's a tribulation booklet. It is hectic. I've read it. And I haven't got much responses because I think when people read it, it convicts their hearts big time. So we are hopefully going to leave a link in the description where you can download it or it will be on our website built in the future, which we're busy with. We will see you guys at our rapture video. So God bless you guys. Keep well. God bless you.